Owen Moon is the CEO of Fixed Ops Digital, the premier digital agency for retailers here in the modern age. Owen Moon, welcome to the Wild West. Hey, Ted. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year and uh, congratulations, Owen, on all the success Fixed Ops Digital is having. I Is it 750 dealers now or more? Yeah, you know, we're around 750 stores and, um, you know, that was kind of how we ended last year. And obviously we're almost already through our first month of January and uh, uh, super excited for, you know, this year and sort of, you know, where we're going as a company. And, uh, you know, really want to talk today about how, uh, uh, you know, what dealerships should probably be focusing on a little bit as we get into the new year. It's it's kind of a good time to sort of reset and, and think about the possibilities and, and what, you uh, where they can actually, uh, you know, win win more business and uh, increase market share. So I'm excited to uh, talk a little bit about that today. Well, I know you're going to put some spark in our fixed operations. So Owen Moon, the show is yours. Yeah, great. Well, thank you very much. Like I said, um, yeah, my, my session's titled, uh, Put a Spark in Your Fixed Operations Department in 2023. Um, Obviously, as a, a new year and uh, everybody's sort of regrouping here after the holidays, um, I feel like uh, some of the info today, I, I think, will will be benefic- very beneficial for uh, service managers and uh, fixed ops directors alike. So uh, uh, first, you know, let's just sort of set the table, right? So kind of what I'm looking at here, and of course, this isn't my information. This is from other, you know, experts and, and industry, um, you know, um, thought leaders and things like that. Just, you know, kind of what are we looking at in t- 2023? And and obviously, you know, a lot of the same that we saw probably at the, towards the end of 2022, right? Uh, first thing I'd say is, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see shortages in new vehicle inventory. Um, as interest rates have started to pump here a little bit uh, towards the end of the year, um, I think it is going to cool off automotive sales. And, uh, you know, one thing that I um, highly predict that sometime at this point or sometime this year, uh, we are going to see, uh, you know, these big manufacturer rebates and aggressive financing offers uh, start to enter our world again. And, uh, of course, you know, the reason why they do that is to try to, you know, push people into the market sooner than uh, than your normal uh, buying cycle. So I, I fully expect that some of that will happen, especially with some of the domestics. I mean, they obviously are really, uh, we're really aggressive with that for many years uh, prior to um, COVID and, and some of the last couple couple years. Um, I think vehicle prices uh, from pre-owned are going to continue to decrease. I think that'll create some challenges for maybe some stores that are a little too heavy in their uh, pre-owned inventory. Um, and it's going to cause vehicles sales to, you know, profits to decline. I think we've had some record years uh, the last couple of years with dealers um, making making money on, on car sales. And uh, I see that kind of uh, sort of, you know, kind of regressing and, and kind of going back to what we saw uh, pre-COVID. Um, but I think where where I'm excited for is is the last thing, and that's that dealerships are going to continue to focus heavily on fixed operations, which obviously, which is why we're all here, and and you know why uh, you know Ted, you put on these great events, um, is just to try to try to really uh, dig into to that side of the business and and get better at it. And uh, um, there's a lot of really cool uh, you know things happening. Um, you know, from trainers to, uh, you know, service managers and fixed ops directors in uh, in the trenches that are, you know, giving great advice to to the industry. Uh, but marketing and, and advertising definitely is something that, uh, you know, is starting to, you know, continue to evolve as we've uh, kind of moved along here. So, um, you know, one of the things I'll start with, and I think, you know, Ted, you've probably seen this slide, you know, many times as people start their presentations or or uh, sessions with you, and and that's kind of high level, right? So in 2021, um, it's really hard to get some data right now with 22, obviously just getting done here. But uh, 2021, dealerships wrote more than 271 million repair orders, and uh, you know that ex- that exceeded uh, 125 billion dollars in total service and part sales. Now, you know most, like I said, a lot of people will use these stats and and then kind of just move on because it's like a high level number, and and then they kind of dig in. What I'm here to talk about is actually getting under the under the hood a little bit, right? Let's get in the trenches and let's kind of break down those 271 million repair orders. Let's talk about that 125 billion and really focus on um, other profit centers inside the fixed operations department. So I always put them in you know these categories, right? Service, tires, accessories, parts. Uh, even collision. I mean, if you're doing any sort of body work or, or yeah. collision, you know, that's definitely another area. And so these are all great, um, 
you know, great profit centers that that definitely from especially from a marketing standpoint are not getting enough attention, right? Um, but I would even say just from an operational standpoint, probably not getting enough attention. And and there's a lot of uh, you know companies that are focused on these particular uh, profit centers, you know, tires, for example, you've got a lot of companies starting to pop up that help with tire sales, um, accessories, uh, parts, that type of thing. So let's talk a little bit about service first, right? And, and I think this is where we've, you know, the last four years and, and we're in our fifth year of business, um, this is where really where we revolutionized uh, marketing from an online standpoint, right? The idea here is that let's build out a more robust uh, service specials page on your web website. Most dealerships had a service specials website or a page on their website, but a lot of times it was very underutilized. Maybe it was a couple, um, you know, just monthly specials that they would put up there, or sometimes they would tap into the OEM uh, offers that were being advertised. You know, what, we, what we've really done for our 750 plus stores is focusing on uh, what we call more of a menu style page, right? So it's focusing on more popular services, getting into those general services, those late ownership services, um, you know, really providing more information, education, uh, recommendations, and then really, you know, kind of uh, recommending to our dealers that they are very transparent in their pricing. Uh, when we do this, we find that uh, we gain more uh, trust from the customer and more importantly, uh, give them a, an opportunity to maybe do some business with us as opposed to see their our websites, know that there's nothing there and then try to move on to see where they can get some of that info. And guess where they're going, right? They're going to the independents if they mm -hmm. if yeah. they don't uh, um, you know come to the dealership. But let's talk a little bit about some of the other profit centers, right? So tire sales, for example, in 2021, automotive tire sales exceeded 122 billion. By 2030, they're predicting, that automotive tire sales will be right around 180 billion. So obviously these are parts of our departments or part of our business that are growing, whether or not we're getting involved or not. So dealerships should focus a little more on tire sales as they move into 2023 here and then you know for future years. So, so one thing that you can do and one thing that we're doing for our stores is we're building out a tire specials page, right? So we're building out this, this infrastructure on your website to, uh, to be able to promote and to help customers get a little more information about tires, right? So one thing you could do is you could focus on recommended tires by model, right? Whether it's a Silverado or maybe a, a Ford um, F-150, you know, these are all, um, you know, very specific vehicles that require, you know, specific tires. Um, one thing that you can do and what we do with a lot of our stores is a good, better, best option, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, here's three different options and here's three different price points. Um, and we think that that's a great way to sort of educate customers and kind of, you know, get them in the ballpark anyways of what they're going to be looking at when it comes time to, um, you know, to buy, uh, buy tires for that, their particular vehicle. And then the biggest thing we want to do is we want to make it easy um, to, to engage and then also take action. And, you know, even being able to tie some of this in with some of the OEM initiatives, right? So I know like, for example, Toyota has a relationship with dealer tire, as opposed, I, I believe a lot of OEMs do. Let's be able to sort of um, integrate dealer tire into this environment to allow customers to maybe take action directly from your website. Moving on to accessories, uh, in 2022, I actually did find some data about this last year. Um, automotive accessory sales exceeded about $1.57 billion. Wow. They, they could predict by 2028 that that's going to be more closer to 2 billion. So again, another area of business that we as, a, as an automotive industry really don't take that seriously in a lot of cases. And we're missing out on those opportunities. I, I know more and more dealers that, you know, have customers come back to them after they buy their, that, you know, that brand new truck and want to show the, the, uh, the people they bought the car from, you know, all the great accessories that they put on uh, from that aftermarket store down the road. Well, Obviously, that's not good for the dealership. The dealership could have very well well sold them those those accessories um, if they would have had a a, a process and a, uh, and a and a focus on that. So one thing that we're doing for our dealers is building out an accessory specials page. Um, again, it's it's you know very very high level, but it's focusing on the most popular accessories that are sold. You know, let's find those seven or eight or nine accessories that we really want to push. And let's get them out on your website so customers know they're available. 
Now, this could be a combination of OEM accessories and then also aftermarket accessories, because obviously as a dealership, we can sort of take advantage of both. Um, something that a lot of our stores are doing so that are really focusing on this are actually prepackaging um, some accessories on some of the most popular vehicles. Whether you're doing it in the showroom or at the dealership level or just online, what you want to do is you want to show customers what those vehicles look like with some of those accessories on there. And obviously that inherently is going to get them excited about potentially adding that to their vehicle. And again, you know, just like ease, just like everything, we want to make it easy. They want to allow them to be able to shop those accessories and take action. Um, there are more and more co companies popping up that are doing e-commerce for accessories. Well, a lot of times when I'm talking to a, a fix ops director or a service manager, they always want to do one or the other, right? Well, I want e-com or I don't want anything. Well, sometimes a good start is to get those accessories online and then integrate the e-com environment as you sort of put it together. So definitely don't be, um, you know, don't be hesitant to, to do something just because you don't have an e-com store. Because honestly, that's a whole nother environment that, uh, yeah. you know, you got to hire somebody, train somebody, make sure that everybody is, is uh, you know, moving is being efficient with that process and uh um it, it, it it's a crawl walk run approach for sure talking a little bit about parts as you know obviously everybody knows parts is a huge part of um the automotive uh business especially from a dealership standpoint exceeded almost 75 billion dollars last in 2021 now the one thing i will that was kind of caught my eye on that was about 30 percent of those um sales were wholesale and another 15% were warranty, right? So out of that 74.5 billion, 55% of that was retail. So one of the things that I always talk about with parts is how do you get more part sales? Well, you get par more part sales by increasing your service business, right? Increasing your repair business. Those are all great ways for us to be able to increase our parts business um, you know, because that is a huge part of it. 55% of our business is retail. So let's figure out a way to get more service and more, more repair business. That's going to inherently increase our parts business. Oh, and I'm doing all the math on all these billions. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're in a pretty big business. It's a lot of business. It's a lot of business. Absolutely. The idea is really simple is that you want to have um, your collision really stand out and be a part of the, um, about the part of the process as well. If you are doing collision, if you're doing a uh, body shop business, and so one thing that we always recommend and that we do for a lot of stores is we build out uh, standalone collision websites. Um, the reason why is because there's a lot that goes into your collision center um, that is going to uh, make sure that customers know about, right? They want to know about the services that you offer, the fact that you work with insurance companies, that you have, that your work is guaranteed. You know, these are all... Uh, it's a lot to try to put it on your, your regular website. Now you should have some stuff about collision on your regular website, but if you can build out a standalone website, it gives you that much more real estate to be able to promote that. Another thing that's kind of um, been, been something that we've always talked about with our stores is can you get a separate address for it? Right. Sometimes mm. you can't because it's connected to your store and it's on the backside yeah. that they won't uh, give you an extra address. But if you have a separate building and you can make it a standalone address, then you can potentially separate your Google business profiles. So now you also have a collision profile that uh, that customers can find when they're searching for it. So, you know, again, that'd be something you have to talk to your city and you'd have to find out exactly what the the uh, opportunity is there for. But if you can separate those those Google business profiles, just like we do for service, let's also separate one for for collision as well. So the last thing I want to talk about um, really in all this is recalls, right? So in 2021, the NHTSA administered over 1,100 safety recall campaigns. That affected nearly 35 million vehicles and other equipment. And so, again, going back to what you just said, Ted, that's big business, right? That's a lot of recalls, a lot of vehicles that have um, sort of built-in service for the dealership. The problem is, or the challenge is, not a lot of dealerships are really focusing on that. So... One of the things that you know we are doing for our stores or that we recommend is integrating a recall lookup widget onto your website, right? Let's let's make sure that if somebody is there, we're giving them that experience. Let's make sure that they don't have to go shop five, six different places to get all the info that they might be looking for. Recalls, I mean, I look for recalls on my vehicles um, periodically just because I know I don't always get them you know, 
sent to me via mail or even email. Um, but we got to make it easy, right? How many people do you know Ted could just you know rattle off their VIN number uh, off the top of their head? I'm looking Most ahead people. at bullet point number two. So I'm not going to have to put my whole VIN number in, that long VIN number? Not anymore, man. You just have to go out and find out your, your license plate number, and uh, and you can check to see if you have a recall. Make it really easy. So nice. um, another thing that obviously would be, you know, let's make sure that the dealerships are getting that information, right, so they can do outreach campaigns. Um, I actually did get a phone call uh, last, last year, probably November, uh, with one of my local – uh, dealerships. Now it was on a vehicle I didn't own anymore. So that's obviously uh, was a challenge, but they were actually calling me to talk to me about a recall, um, which I thought was interesting because I'd never received a phone call from a dealership before on, on an outreach program. So getting that information, if somebody goes on your website and, and put, ask for, you know, information about a recall, let's get that to the dealership and get it to your service BDC so they can do some outreach. And then obviously, you know, integrate recalls into your normal service nice. appointments. You know, time is money. People don't want to come back five, six different times to get different things done. If you can make it really easy and say, hey, look, we're going to change your oil. We're going to rotate your tires. And then we're also going to fix that recall that, uh, you know, that that obviously you have on your vehicle. Um, that customer is going to give you a better CSI score. They're going to walk away feeling very good about the, the relationship that they just had with your store. And they're going to feel better about their vehicle because they're like, hey, we got I checked off all these boxes, that type of thing. So I'll leave you with this, right? Once you build all this into your website, once you get all these things kind of tied in and, and you know, create that experience for your your uh, for your customer, then it, it opens up a lot of doors for other things, right? So creating offer and pricing consistency across multiple digital channels. And what I mean by that is that when your advertising syncs in to your website, so if you're putting out something on your Facebook um, for an ad, and then that person then goes to the website and sees that same offer, that same pricing, that same uh, imagery, that type of thing, it's going to create that consistency. So the only way you can get that done is by putting that information online at the beginning. And then obviously, you know, that'll help you through some of your other things. So as more and more dealers are spending money on paid media, you know, paid search, email marketing, social marketing, Facebook advertising, stuff like that, you know, nothing worse than driving that customer directly to a scheduler or taking them into a page that doesn't have a lot of information. So by, by creating that foundation, by giving them that experience on the website, it opens up so many other things. So I'll end with some takeaways, right? I'll leave you with this. 2023, if you're not doing it already, this is some things that you can definitely do. Showcase more services on your website. Focus on other fixed operation profit centers like tires, accessories. Increased customer pay revenue will obviously increase your, your retail parts revenue. Promote that collision or body shop that you have. Um, increase recall opportunity through website integration and create offer and pricing consistency um, across multiple channels. Obviously, this isn't everything that you need to do, but from a marketing standpoint, from a website standpoint, I think this will take you a long ways uh, as you move through this year and uh, set you up for success. So, Ted, with that, um, any questions? Fantastic. Owen Moon, everybody, is the premier fixed ops digital agency, the only choice out there for retailers. Uh, everything is seamless. I tell you, Owen, your stuff is beautiful. It works great. A lot of accolades from our dealer audience. So congratulations to you. And it uh, looks like you got a lot going on. I love a lot of the new things you're adding. One of them, as I mentioned, was the, the recalls. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, that's, you know, came because of um, we opened Pandora's box, right? We said, hey, we got to do more online with service marketing. That was four years ago. Our dealers are now demanding more. They want to dig into sure. these other profit centers. They want to figure out how can we sell more tires? How can we sell more accessories? So we've got to give them those resources to be able to do that because, again, we still don't have enough time in our day, right? So let's not make it too difficult, make it too time involved for our, our service managers who who are pressed for time and just trying to help their, their customers. And uh, um, we feel like we're, we're setting ourselves up pretty good here for, for the new year. So visit Owen at fixedopsdigital.com. His email is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. You can reach him there. Uh, now, if you're going to NADA, Owen, are, are you going to be there by chance this week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, okay. we do have a booth, so stop okay. by. Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're kind of showcasing some of the new things that we're rolling out here for, um, for 2023. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're excited to see some dealers. I think it's going to be a, a good show. Um, obviously Dallas is going to be a little interesting cause, uh, uh, I don't think we've ever had it in Dallas before. So yeah, but oh, um, and it's the wild west. So it on. is the wild west. It's perfect. You guys, everything ties together here in the uh, last part of January. So I love it. <laughs> so, well, everybody, go. um, if you want to bring your dealership up to the modern age, uh, visit Owen Moon, Fix Stops Digital. He'll be at NADA. If not, fixstopsdigital.com is email. Owen at Fix Stops Digital. Do not miss the opportunity. Uh, Owen Moon, thank you for all you do for our industry. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate it, sir. Owen Moon from Fixed Ops Digital here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.